In this video, we're going to learn about pan frying as well as the standard breading procedure. Before we actually fry our product, we're gonna go ahead and bread our product. Uh, and we know that breading is going to help protect the product. It's gonna give it a little coating uh, to help protect it as well as provide a desirable mouth feel uh, and texture. So uh, for our standard breading procedure, we're going to go dry, wet, dry. So our first dry is going to be seasoned flour. You can see I have some salt and pepper that I'm going to mix in. For the wet today, I'm using a combination of uh, egg and milk, which is gonna be our wet. And then our final dry is going to be our seasoned breadcrumbs. Uh, each of these uh, are seasoned. Uh, it's going to make sure that we have, ensure that we have a well-seasoned product in the end. Okay. All right. So I'm using a, a chicken cutlet today. So I took a chicken breast and split it, pounded it out till it was uh, nice and thin. Um, very flat applications like this work very well for pan frying. Um, so um, when I use my standard breading procedure, um, I wanna have a dry hand and a wet hand. Um, and I don't know if you've tried to like bread things before and you bread one and it's fine, you bread two, and then you kind of start to develop almost like a glove of breading on your hand. And this method is going to ensure that that doesn't happen. So I'm going to take with what's going to be my wet hand and I'm gonna pick up my chicken cutlet and I'm gonna put it into my dry flour. I'm gonna take my dry hand, okay, coat it in that flour. Going to give it a good shake off with this first dry. I really want to make sure it's nicely shaken off. It's going to go into my wet. I'm going to use my wet hand again. Make sure it's coated well. Into my final dry. I'm going to use my dry hand again. And you can see with these breadcrumbs what I'm doing is I take my hand and I give it just a little bit of a press. This helps to make sure that the, those breadcrumbs, which are much coarser than flour is going to be, uh, adhere nicely to my product. And I'm using my dry hand for all of this. So you can see now I have this really nice um, breaded uh, chicken cutlet. So using my dry hand, I'm slowly going to drop my cutlet into my oil. Um, so my oil has been preheated to 350 degrees. Uh, I'm using a cast iron skillet and I'm using a candy thermometer to make sure that I maintain the right temperature. Um, it's really important uh, temperature control. If our temperature is too low, uh, our food is gonna become oil logged and not get crispy like we want it to. So it'll be greasy and kind of soft. Uh, if it gets too hot, a um, couple things can happen. First, the outside will cook before the inside does. Um, and if it really gets too hot, um, our pan can flash, uh, meaning catch on fire, uh, which is go could be very dangerous. All right, so when we add our food to the pan, um, a lot of people get a little nervous. You know, it's hot oil, hot oil is scary. So they kind of want to like stand back and throw it in. And that is not a good idea. Uh, that's going to uh, cause your oil to splatter. We want to very calmly and delicately add our food to the pan. So you can see I'm going to hold it in my dry hand and pushing it away from me, I'm going to slowly drop it into the pan. And you saw how nice and gentle that was, how easy. No oil splashed out of the pan. There was no sloshing, nothing dramatic. Uh, it was a very smooth drop into the pan. So I'm just gonna double check my temperature and I'm still, uh, I dropped just a little bit, uh, so I'm about 340. Uh, so I'm gonna bring that temperature back up to 350. I'm gonna go wash my hands. In the meantime, I'll check back in with you right then. All right, so uh, we're about halfway done our cooking process. Um, I have about uh, an inch of oil in my pan, which is just kind of enough to coat the, uh, uh, the cutlet that we're frying. So at this point, like I said, we're about halfway done cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and flip my cutlet because you can see uh, uh, some of that cutlet is out of the oil. So I'm gonna go ahead 
and give it a flip. This is one of the differences uh, between pan frying and deep frying. Uh, generally, the oil in pan frying is not going to cover the product all the way. Uh, so we're going to want to flip it about halfway through cooking. All right, so my chicken has a really nice uh, even color. Um, and um, it's starting to kind of move around in the pan, almost looking like it wants to float a little bit. So uh, these are all indications uh, that the product uh, may be done. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my meat thermometer here. Perfect, all right. About 170 degrees. Uh, Current standards uh, for chicken, 165 for 15 seconds. So that 170 is just where we wanna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little bit of a shake off right onto my cooling rack. And while it's still hot, I wanna give it just a little sprinkle of salt. That's kind of our final uh, step for, uh, for fried food for seasoning. Um, so we seasoned each of the layers of the flour and then we season it when it comes out of the oil. It's important that we put our final product uh, on a cooling rack like this. You can also use uh, paper towels uh, on a plate or in a, a hotel pan, uh, but I'm definitely partial to the, the cooling rack. Um, what would happen if we put this just uh, right onto the pan instead of on the cooling rack is the bottom would get soggy. So uh, this lifts it up uh, and ensures that we have a nice crisp uh, fried product uh, when it's time to serve. Let's review. For the standard breading procedure, we're going to use dry, wet, dry, and make sure that we have one hand dedicated to dry and one hand dedicated to wet so that we don't build up breading on our fingers. Next, with pan frying, heat management is very important. We wanna maintain a steady 350 degrees. Too low, our food will become soggy and oil logged. Too high, the outside of our food will burn before the center is cooked, and we risk uh, flashing our pan or catching on fire. Finally, when you remove your food from the oil, put it onto a cooling rack. This is going to ensure that our food stays crispy all around instead of getting soggy on the bottom.